uh, attack this game today and uh, this is exactly what we did and uh, yeah, feels amazing. Yeah, and you said this was the game you were looking for when you signed. You saw your father playing it, you grew up with it. I mean, to, to not only win it and score a hat-trick, but in the way you did, how good does that feel today to send the City fans home like that? Yeah, it feels amazing. Uh, the atmosphere, insane. Uh, hat-trick, uh, me and Phil, uh, yeah, it doesn't get better than that. Erlen, it's Sean Wright Phillips here. Um, congratulations on the, the win and obviously your hat-trick. Um, you. it's, it's a pleasure to see you playing in a blue shirt, by the way. But um, what, did it, what was the build-up like and the atmosphere around the training ground and around the fans before the game? Yeah, you know, we were at the national team, so we, every, everyone played different, uh, different uh, games and everything. Uh, but we came back on uh, Thursday training. It was easy, didn't do a lot, but Friday, that's when I, uh, I felt it. You know, I came in, I came in, the, in the training ground and I directly felt that, OK, now something special is going to happen. And, uh, and, uh, it's it's hard to explain. You just you kind of have to experience the the feeling and the kind of I don't know the aura or the energy around it. This is uh, something I cannot explain, and uh, it was special, and uh, we showed this today. Erling, you're the first person ever to score three uh, home hat tricks in a row in the Premier League, and you're the fastest to three hat tricks. You've taken the record off the Michael Owen. Uh, by 40 games, actually, sitting next to me, but he amazingly still wants to talk to you. No, I've got no records left, Erling. You've taken them all off me now. But I sat in this chair, Erling, only, uh, only a few weeks ago. I think you'd only played three or four games, and I said that you could score 50 goals in all competitions this season. I think a lot of people laughed. Um, I'm now thinking I was stupid. Maybe it's 60 or 70 the way you're going. But, I mean, these records obviously mean something to every striker. Yeah, you know, records are... You know, of course, a striker thinks of goals, but when I go into a game, I don't think of, oh, now I want to score a goal. No, I cannot do this. I have to relax and do everything right. And if we do everything right, then the chances will come. And if the finish is, finishing is good, then the finishing will go in the goal. And that's exactly how I have to think. And uh, when I score one goal, celebrate, it's a good feeling. So I want to do it again. And to do it three times, nothing's better. And we're just watching the goals there. I know you've spoken about him before. Three consecutive home games for Erling Haaland. Never been done before in the Premier League. Outstanding start to what's going to be a stellar career. He is the star man among stars. And Phil Foden, who's not too far behind, joining that hat-trick road to remember. There have only ever been two hat-tricks in the derby before for Manchester City. Two today in one game. He started it and he finished it. But United weren't totally finished. Martial got a couple. And Anthony fired him from distance. At the end of an excellent run under Eric Ten Hag, who loses his first derby like the five United managers before him. He said he'd go back to one point behind Arsenal. That's their challenge to get back to the top of the table. But they're certainly top dog in Manchester by this extraordinary scoreline of City 6, United 3. A comprehensive win then for Manchester City and even with those second half goals Manchester United never looked like getting into that game. A difficult afternoon for Eric Ten Hag, for City on fire. It was a hat-trick for Erling Haaland, it was a hat-trick for Phil Foden. They haven't had a City player score a hat-trick uh, at Manchester City since 1970 in this fixture. They had two on the same day and in the same game. Phil Foden and Erling Haaland have a match ball to fight over, although there's plenty of them, we know. Uh, but Phil Foden's got his hands over it on it for now. He and Erling Haaland, hat-trick scorers at the Etihad this afternoon. What it means is that Manchester City moved to within a point of Arsenal at the top of the table. Look at that goal difference as well. Plus 20 after eight games of the season. Manchester United stay in sixth place, having played seven. We started on the wrong foot. I mean, they had a lot of chances straight from the game and uh, straight from kickoff. And uh, yeah, I think we can only blame ourselves from, from not coming really into the game at, at any point. What was it you weren't doing? You say you started off on the wrong foot. Yeah, I think we missed a bit of courage to, to play out from the back and uh, we let them be in their strength. Um, so, yeah, I think the, the main focus of this game will be on ourselves. I mean, there's a lot of things that we, sh we need to change, uh, a lot of things we need to do better. Um, yeah, today was, uh, was far from acceptable for what we should be doing. Having made such strides recently, won your last four, does that feel like a big step backwards from the progress you've made? 
You know, like you said, it's still progress. I mean, if you would be winning anything, it would be a different conversation, but uh, there'll be bump on the road. I don't think we're going to take this as a very tough defeat, but again, there's a, there's a next game in the next few days and, uh, and the weekend after, so it's really just about uh, getting back up and, uh, yeah, it shows character and we need to do that. Any defeat is bad and a heavy defeat is bad, but the fact it's the Manchester derby, does it make it that much worse? Yeah, of course. I mean, you always want to, to beat the rivals. I mean, you always want to, to win the derbies. And, uh, yeah, like you said, the, the games before at home, we've done very well, not only against the rivals, but against the top teams. We, we won them, and then we come here and we lose. I mean, it's a, of course, it's tough and uh, something that we need to do better. And then when we play them next time this season, hopefully we'll be on, the, on a better foot. After a day like today, do the players have to have honest conversations with each other? No, I think as a group, I think everyone as a group will be looking uh, looking at themselves first of all, and then after tomorrow, tomorrow we'll have a, a meeting with the manager, and uh, we'll go, probably go through everything that uh, that went wrong today, and then uh, from there we'll take on uh, on the next game. Thanks for talking to us. Welcome. Thanks, Phil. That will be a painful meeting. Um, what frustrated you the most about United today? Because you were optimistic. Before kickoff, like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always optimistic before games. Just look, look, City are brilliant, but I, I think we'll probably look in more detail at the goals later. But I think a lot of them goals could have been prevented. I think team selection possibly he might have got wrong. I think he got carried away a little With the bit. Ericsson Fernandez thing. Ericsson yeah. Fernandez thing. Yeah, look, Ericsson is predominantly an attacking player. Now, for him to be playing in that central midfield role against lesser teams is great. You get away with it. But once you go to a Manchester City against a top-class team, you don't know where you are because there's that many quality players around. They keep the ball that well. All of a sudden, you've got Bernardo Silva behind you. You've got Kevin De Bruyne coming at you. You just don't know where you are. It's, 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 a, it's, a, different, it's a totally different world than when you're playing against these, these so-called lesser teams, um, and he, he got found out today. Um, it's not his position. He probably, he's the one who probably wants to play in the Fernandez position. Really, that, that, that's where he wants to play. But because it's gone so well against these teams, the manager's got carried away a little bit with it, I think. Because he's such a good footballer, he's able to find um, Fernandez at, at, at will, really. But in these types of games, you, you don't get possession. You just don't against Manchester City. And that's where you need to have a defensive midfield player who plays the position really well. He knows what's behind him. He knows what's in front. What's in front. He knows when to press. He knows when to come and sit back and just defuse the situation. He doesn't know that position. And I, I feel for him because I, I'm a very similar player. I wanted to be the one like Fernandez going forward. But in them big games, you look back, the manager never really played me in them, them games against the best teams. You think of your Barcelona, your Real Madrid, because you knew positionally sense-wise, in them games, I wasn't clever enough to do that because I was brought up as more of a midfield player. You talk about your Nicky Butch, your Roy Keane, your Michael Carrick, played the position brilliantly, brilliantly well. I think he had a player on there today with great experience on the bench in Casemiro who would have been a lot more suited to. It's, I mean, before the game, I said Casemiro he's probably is the one player on the bench that he's desperate to get in there, but at the minute, he's not been given the excuse to play him. You've had a little dabble at management. Do you feel as if you can do that four games on the spin, but still, no, it doesn't matter, I'm playing, I'm playing this way? You've got to take the opposition to account. The, today is totally different. It's the hardest test, isn't it? Well, it's, is. the, it's the biggest test in world football. Yeah. It's playing it going up against Manchester City, not just Europe, not just England. It's the biggest test in the world going up against a team who keep the ball so well with so many talented players. You have to have two players in the middle of the pitch who play the position brilliantly well. Now, the only two they've got at the minute are McTominay and Casemiro, or Fred, you could say in that type of a position that you do sometimes get dragged out a bit. But to play an attacking player there, it's brave in some ways. It's a very attacking team. But whatever you do against these teams, you don't get possession. I remember going back to the Champions League final against Barcelona, we thought, we're going to overrun these. We're going to have too much for them. We didn't touch the ball for 83 minutes. First seven minutes were great. After that, you don't touch the ball. And these games are very much like that. So it's imperative you have two players in the middle of the pitch who know the position. Today, even McTominay at times today, he got dragged out of position. He got dragged out of position the third goal. for the third goal, and that leaves Ericsson, the man who's not really a central midfield player, on his own. He didn't know what to do. He, he didn't know to drop off. He didn't know to go to the ball. He's put in awkward, awkward positions, and I just felt the, the experience of Casemiro, what he's done in the game, what he's done in that, that position, 
that was a game for him today. But look, looking back, City were brilliant. They, they might, even if you do play them two plays today, it still could have been 6-3. Six, six, it still could have been, but I think United would have had a better chance being a bit more solid in the middle of the pitch. OK, but City did win 6-3, and here is their manager, Pep Guardiola. Pep, very simply, how good were your side today, particularly in the first half? Yeah, I was really good. I scored four goals, so that we couldn't score really more. more. Uh, so I was in the half time with our guy, we have continued, but always more difficult. And uh, yeah, they played better in the second half, but uh, yeah, in the last minutes we were flat. But yeah, you know, great victory, good game. Everyone was happy in the stadium and they enjoyed it, we enjoyed it. And against our rival, uh, Man, Man United, so yeah, good good night for a good afternoon for us. As well as the scoreline, for you as a coach, again, particularly in that first half, what did you like the most? Uh, we could, yeah, in general, was was really good. Uh, how how aggressive we were without the ball, they could not play, but it, of course, when when they have Lisandro and, and Bruno and Eriksson and all of them, they have quality to play. We let them be a little bit in a few minutes in the second half, but in the first half we were there in the term, we were good, we were the spaces, and after the quality the players we have up front make the difference. As well as the quality you have, was also on their show today, not for the first time, the desire. It happened for the day one we are here, so this is not negotiable. So we can win or lose, but the effort and the desire and help each other. But many things we can do better. And, and uh, some players still are not, uh, they were not good today and uh, we had to improve. Is that the sign of you, always looking for perfection, even though it's a tremendous scoreline, you've got two players to score a hat-trick, but you're still not completely happy? Listen, perfection doesn't exist, so it's impossible, but we have to try to look for, go over there, so that's for sure. So, not the result, the six goals, they did. we have done it good. We can do better, and many, many players, a few players, sloppy passes, we lost it, and that's not good. We have to be more consistent in our, in our passes, so... And at the end of the final third, you can be more creativity, you can be take more risk, but in some areas, so still, we are not, we are not good. When United scored that third goal, Sean said to me, Pat won't be happy, you know. <laughs> you know him well, don't you? <laughs> yeah, but I just think, I think even if you speak to Mo or Paul, if you're that comfortable in a game, the last thing you want to do is give false hope, because then it just makes your game even harder, because United were going to keep going to try and get another one, just to close the gap in the situation so it doesn't look as bad as it was so to concede three goals you could see for the first time I would say they look like they took their foot off the gas which when you put on the fresh legs I thought Alvarez is going to want to get a goal Mares, Cole Palmer you thought they was going to go for it but it seemed like they stepped backwards rather than forward mind you in the last eight home games they've scored 36 goals now yeah. just what's conceded three goals and it doesn't make any difference when <laughs> but it does to, to but it does absolutely and to be honest he's got to he's got to be like that I mean you look at they let you know, the Champions League slipped from being sloppy. You know, they're in total control. So when you get into these positions in the league, you, you, you know, you've got to practice closing games out, winning by more, whatever, whatever however you're going to do it. But to concede three goals in the second half, as much as he'll over overall he'll be happy, there's still something there for him to work on. Still something there for him to be frustrated about. Okay, but it's still the three points for Manchester City. They have blown Manchester United away today by six goals to three at the Etihad in the record derby goal scoring tally.